my name is Charlie and welcome to my channel and welcome to my weekly reads. Um, I hope you guys are well, I hope you've had a good one, I hope you're enjoying the beginning of the summer holidays if you are indeed part of the summer holidays. <laughs> um, so yeah I'm gonna dive right into the books that I finished and then I'll get onto all the nutty stuff after. So um, the books that I've finished since the last time I spoke to you <laughs> I finished The Years by Annie Eno. I was kind of, I was kind of stormed through the last of this. I, I, I don't know whether I've got the most out of this. This might be one I will reread because um, last weekend, as you'll see with a lot of these, I kind of just, I wasn't feeling well. And so um, therefore I don't know whether my brain could take it. But yeah, this is basically The Years. It's non-fiction. It's kind of, it's told in fragments and it's Annie Eno sort of um, her sort of journals I would say almost um of the years between 1941 and 2006 this obviously includes 9-11 so um just sort of be aware, aware of that if that's a trigger for you um con yeah, so content one for that yeah so yeah it's I felt like I didn't really know where I was at with it I felt like there were times when I was enjoying it and um what was it I'm sure I saw Sean the Book Maniac um, put this on his TBR because I think and Eric had explained to him that this wasn't the f best to have as if you are new to Annie I know this shouldn't be your first I think that's what Sean said that Eric said to him and I can see why because yeah it's just it's very fragmentary and um, very yeah I feel like you really need a lot of focus for this and obviously I did not have that at the weekend either which way I finished it then I finished also um, Neon Roses um, by Rachel Dawson. Rachel Dawson is a Welsh author. This is um, about, it's set in the 80s and it's around the time of the minor strikes in Wales. Um, and we follow the lead character of Alunad. Alunad, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I did look it up. I feel like I still don't know how. Anyway, so she's um, in Wales at the beginning of the book and um, she's with, she's sort of, um, not engaged to her, she's got a boyfriend and who wants to sort of marry her and it's like almost like her life, she can see her life sort of going in one direction. And then um, a group of um, people from uh, like the L LGBTQ group like came up from London, which is, this is based on real fact. And um, it actually happened um, some in the 80s um, some the LGBT something, uh, alliance, kind of, I can't remember exactly the words of, words of it, but they basically did loads of fundraising and came up to Wales and was he? Um, shared that money with the miners. So um, yeah, it's based on that real fact and you then follow Luna, Luna when she meets a character called June and um, sort of her, who, um, who is, yeah, it's, it's her sort of journey of exploration of sort of self-identity from there and also there's like a sister sort of relationship with uh, Luna and um, so that's also another dynamic which I liked. So yeah, I like this book. Um, I feel like maybe if I wasn't feeling so crummy, I would have enjoyed it a little bit more, but it was sort of, it was good. It was a good, a good sort of three, four star read. Yeah, and I, like, yeah, I'm pleased I read it. So, and I still love this cover. I feel like this is like one of my favorite, favorite book covers. I can't believe I didn't include that on my mid-year freak out. If you haven't seen my mid-year freak out tag I did with Charlie, I'll link that in the description. I love this cover. I'm obsessed with this cover. And speaking of, um, actually, before I go into the cut other cover thing that I'm going to talk to you about, um, I also finished again um, one I was talking about last weekend, which was Illuminated by Melanie Sykes, which is sort of a memoir about her experience, her sort of from childhood upwards. But um, Melanie, in case you don't know, was uh, well, she's a was a presenter and a, a UK sort of TV personality, um, and um, she was re recently diagnosed over the sort of the last, like, 20, I think it was like last few years, a few years ago, just recently um, diagnosed with autism. And um, it's sort of, so it's, we're sort of hearing her sort of growing up to the future uh, sort of, and her career and things, but also sort of how, like, how autism has sort of affected her over the years. And sort of, it's just sort of reiterates the importance of getting diagnoses and stuff. Um, and yeah it's just really really interesting I think Melanie's awesome I think it's so important to have like um she's sort of in her 50s and she's just yeah it's really good to have that strong representation I feel like often as soon as women hit 40 they're sort of written off and it like I feel like the media turns on them and it's just not nice yeah I just think yeah uplift up, I'm here to uplift 
female uh, voices and um, particularly neurodivergent female voices. It was good, I'd recommend it. Um, and then <laughs> I'm going to get on to um, a book that <laughs> I was really anticipating. This is Thrust by Lydia Yuknovich. And this is one that I've had on my shelves for like a year. Um, and I love this cover. Like, I'm still obsessed with this cover. And I was so excited to read this. But I started this like a couple of days ago. And for one reason or another, <laughs> again, I just couldn't get into it. So this is kind of environmental sci-fi. Um, and we follow the like, main character of Liv. And it sort of hops between times. And it's... Um, it also then has a historical element that Charlie explained to me at the end to do with the Statue of Liberty and um, which all of that sounds amazing. If you want to go and hear a bit more about it and I think Charlie's going to have be talking about it in his wall gathering and also he mentioned about it at the end of our Midgeffrey Cow. So again, links in the description. Yeah, but unfortunately it was just too much for me. So I ended up putting it down and temporarily DNFing it. Based upon what Charlie, Charlie loves this book so I feel like I will go back to it. But for now, this was not the time for me in this book, but I will keep it. This chronic, this co cover is still iconic to me. I love it. So yeah, at the moment, not right now. Um, so those were the books that I have finished slash DNF'd. My, in terms of my current reads, I'm listening to um, Mrs. S by Kay Patrick on audiobook. Um, and I literally have only listened to like the first chapter of this, so I, I cannot, I do not have anything to say. It's set in a boarding school, it's queer. This is kind of what I know about it from <laughs> at the moment. Um, in terms of what I'm physically reading, actually, also I'm continuing my Frankenstein read on um, the Audrey app, which I'm obsessed with the audio, or I'm obsessed with the Audrey app. I feel like I want to go back and read loads more classics through the Audrey app because it just explains things so much more. It's got all of these like extra cool features that make you basically take your time and, and gives you like behind the scenes information kind of thing. So if you're the kind of person that reads a classic, stops and then does loads of Googling, the Audrey app basically has all of that there for you, which I just love so much. It's just all in one place. Um, and you have your own personal sort of like guide to guide you through the book. And yeah, I'm obsessed with the Audrey app specifically and I've loved reading Frankenstein. I'm more than halfway through it. Um, then um, I'm also, um, I started reading um, Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendes. As again, I mentioned in my last video, this is, we follow sort of two narratives, um, a historical narrative sort of set at the Windrush time and then a present day narrative. Um, I think it's with Jesse who um, um, sort of somehow gets into sex work, I believe. And it's sort of, again, I'm still quite early doors into this. I love this. Um, I'm excited to carry on reading this. Right, um, right. And then I started, um, I've read again, only one chapter of Carla. I picked this up and I was like, I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna jump into this. I'm gonna re like devour this in like one go. And um, for some reason, uh, because I've been like starting to do, do things and it's worn me out, I just haven't then afterwards um, had the energy to actually visit, fit, sit and read much more because Rainbow Milk has had my attention for now not because there's anything wrong with Carla just because I've only got so much energy so I do well I, this weekend I'm going to try and really dedicate some time to this and again this could be another booker long listed book so um cross fingers and the booker is literally like as as you are watching this it's like days away like I am so excited um so yeah I'm also <laughs> this was going to be my evening read I like started it I read a I think there's a poem at the beginning because uh, this is like um, short stories, poems and various other things and yeah but I've literally read one poem and then I've put it down so it's not really worth me mentioning this but I am I am planning on <laughs> making my way through this. It's Queer Life and Queer Love 2, an anthology. Yeah so those are all the books um, in terms of currently reading and what I have read then I'm going to dive in and show you, I went um, shopping, I'll show you some books I picked up this week. Um, I went shopping with one of my lovely um, library like friends, colleagues, and um, I picked up, so from the charity shop, I picked up Brixton Beach by Roma Tern. Roma Tern is a Sri Lankan author and last year um, I read and adored 
The Seven Moons of Marley Almeida. It was like one of my favourite books of the year, uh, is one of my favourite books, I've already read, read, read it twice. And Charlie, my lovely friend Charles Heathcote, recommended um, another Sri Lankan author and told me to read Brixton Beach. So I cannot wait to read this. That's all I really know about it. Um, I think it's sort of historical fiction. But yeah, I am literally so excited. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, and it's like 25p. So, I mean, honestly. And speaking of bargains, I found The Weekend in the same charity shop. It's by Charlotte Wood. Or Sh Charlotte Wood is an Australian author. I think this was listed for one of the prizes a few years ago. Um, I, this, this is a, like, I think this is like a 2020 release, I believe, or maybe possibly even slightly older. But the, this is like in brand new condition. I'm not sure whether it's even been read. And I think, so the plot of this is kind of loosely what I know is four friends, one dies, that friend was the glue, and the other three friends have sort of got to work out how, where they are without, like, without her. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read this. Right, and lastly, I went into Waterstones. I was really, really good in Waterstones. Um, because obviously the book is being announced next week, and I know that I won't be so good, um, I only picked up one. I was kind of, I was like, if I see any James Baldwin or translated fiction, which again, I'll get into it onto in a minute, then um, I was kind of like, those were the books I knew I would potentially pick up. And I did. I saw um, Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This is um, one of James Baldwin's most iconic works, and I haven't read it. I read that if Beale Street could talk last year and I it was a five star read for me is probably one of the best books I've ever read in terms of writing ability and yeah I just cannot wait to read more of his backlist and specifically this one that is so iconic. Then in case you guys want to see I've got like a pile of possibilities for women and translation Month. I really don't know because obviously with the booker being announced and um, we don't know what's going to be listed I might have read a few of the booker ones already or I might have read hot none so it depends on that's going to be my prime focus but after that other than that yeah it is women in translation month um so august is dedicated um to celebrating um female writers in translation right so the first book the, all the books that i've got four books on my physical tbr um but that are um women in translation week like kind of books and then i'll tell you the ones that are on my e-reader so the first one is one i hauled um a uh, called uh, uh, like I called recently um called When I Sing Mountains Dance by o Irene Solar. This is translated from the Catalan by by Mary Fay Leatham. Um, so yeah, this is like one that's probably well, I'm definitely going to read this in August. I say I definitely I really really this is like my top top priority, other than the one I will show you next, <laughs> which is the next one is my um Soul Twin by Nino Haratashvili. Um, Nino Haratishvili wrote The Eighth Life, which was like one of my favourite books. I just love that book. Um, and I think this is kind of, I saw it, I've seen it somewhere that is like a Wuthering Heights retelling, which I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or whether, how true that is. So but again, it's another beautiful, stunning cover. And this is one I'm going to buddy read with Charlie. And I've also got, and so this is, I'm sorry, that's translated by Ruth Martin, I think from the German, I believe. It doesn't say what language on inside the cover, but I'm fairly certain it's the German, if it's like the other one. Then we've got Daughter of Fortune by Isabella Lande, and this is translated from the Spanish by Margaret Sayers Hedden. And this will be one, if I can get to it this month, it'll be one that I read with Bernard and Emily, but I'm not sure whether what, we're plan, what our plans are for this, so I need to talk to Emily and... Also, I need to talk to Bernard, and again, depends on what's on the booker. Then lastly, I have got um, My Brilliant Friend by Eleanor Ferrante, and this is translated by Anne Goldstein, as are, I think, all of Eleanor Ferrante's works. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this is like an iconic, like, I think it's like a, is it a quartet, I believe? Um, so yeah, I have had this on my shelves for so long. <laughs> Will I get to it in August or, or by the end of the year even? I don't know. Um, in terms of books for women in translation that are on my e-reader, I've got Caritas Untitled by Kristin Marja Baldur's Dot Dottier. That is an, I, I think they're either Norwegian or Icelandic. I cannot quite remember. I think it's a memoir, this is. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll put the translator and stuff on screen. I've also got The Housekeeper by Yoko Agawa. And again, translator on screen. And also um, on, from NetGalley, I've got Zhuja by Nilo Haritashvili, which is out in November. So again, one I want to get to. 
So those are all like my sort of books I've read, my plans and stuff like that. And um, I'm just about to go live and do a live show with Tolly in a minute. If, um, if you haven't watched it, but this is, we're about to do our book of predictions. So yeah, um, go and check that out. I'll link that in the description. It would have already happened by the time you're watching this. Um, and um, yeah, I am feeling loads better. So what happened, I'll tell you quickly. Um, so after I, um, like I filmed these obviously sort of midweek and by the weekend I um, was ill and needed antibiotics. <laughs> So clearly last week when I was feeling a little bit down and low, it was because of that, which I didn't realise. Um, I am, like, as you can see, I'm loads like, better, I'm all better, but um, yeah, it's just my energy. Like, um, I do get, my energy always gets hit really hard. It's always what happens to me. Um, so yeah, it's just, I've just got to get my energy back fully. I am mostly better, but I think I've just got to take some days to sort of, like, I can do stuff. I'll have a burst of energy and then be wiped. So yeah. We'll see, but thank you so much for all your kind words. You guys are so sweet. Um, but yeah, that's that's why I haven't been able, like in my best reading focus, not that that's the most important thing. But yeah, I hope you guys are well and I hope that you guys have had a good week. Let me know how you are and are you excited for the book? I'm literally days away. I'm so excited. It's like bookish Christmas. Apart from that and Women's Prize time is like my favourite times of year in terms of my reading. Um, we know, we just don't know what's going to end up on there. Is it we're going to have some good books? Are we going to have some like awful books? <laughs> books that will divide us, like Pod, and um, books that you guys that we that books will, will be that we will love, and books that we, some of us will hate. It's all part of the madness and part of the fun. So yeah, um, let me know. Are you excited for book art? Um, in the, in the comments below. Um, yeah. So yeah, take care and send you guys lots of love.